Hi, my name is Gagandeep Gill. I'm here with uh, United States University for my MSN 572 term. I'm doing my head to toe assessment for my MSN FNP program. And I'm just going to do uh, show my ID at first. That's my student ID, I'm gonna set it down. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and use this phone to do a mirror check. I don't have any other um, phones right now. Oh, sorry, I should turn it around. Um, this is behind my camera. It's a wall. I will show you in a little, oops, in a little bit. Um, just like that. Hopefully this is a good angle. Okay. Um, next I'm going to go ahead and just do a room check. I'm going to go and set this phone down. Um, just so we know that there's nothing in the, I'm not using the phone or anything. I'm going to go ahead and take the, my camera off chart or off my ring stand and just do an integrity check. Um, room scan, this is a 360 room scan. That's the wall um, behind my patient. This is all my stuff um, that I'll be using for the exam. I have my um, uh, my checklist right here. Sorry, I'm really nervous. I have my blank piece of paper that I'll be using as my brain dump. Um, that's my patient. I have the second wall right here. I have the third wall right here. That's gonna be my ring stand that I'll be using. This is just a, a window to the parking lot. It's really high, so there's really nothing out there. I can't see anything. Um, that's right here. This is the uh, another wall, hallway, wall, closet. Um, that's the opening to the bathroom right there. Once again, all my stuff. This is the entire floor. This is where I'll be standing right here. I'm gonna go and put my phone back on my ring stand and do the rest of my... Okay. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the integrity checklist. Once I've done that, I'm just reading through this right here and... Um, I already showed my blank piece of paper, which is what I'll be taking notes on in just a few minutes. Um, oh, I'm gonna set it right here because I have my writing stuff right there. Uh, I already did the 360 scan, um, floors, walls. Uh, I used the mirror to show the, the back part of my camera. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a um, Oh, um, I can go ahead and do my, I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. Let me just, uh, I'm gonna set this down right here. I will be doing my, oh, actually I don't need the bottom part of that. I'm just gonna take some notes on here in a little bit. Let me just, uh, <sighs> sorry, I'm really nervous for this. Uh, I'm doing a making a verbal um, attestation statement saying that I promise uh, I promise to adhere to the student code of conduct and that I am not using any outside sources or any help during the exam. Um, I have uh, I'm go ahead uh, t showing my ears, my right ear. I don't have any um, listening device in here. I don't have any, and then my left ear, I don't have any listening device in here either. Um, just wanted to show that uh, inner ear, left, you know, outer ear. Um, I don't, I have my watch on just for the timing. That's it, um, nothing else. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my, let me just go ahead and introduce myself to my patient and I'm gonna go ahead and get my patient's consent. Um, for the video. Um, my name is Gagandeep Gil once again. I'm here with uh, United States University doing my um, head-to-toe assessment for MSN uh, FNP program. Do I have your permission to record this video for my professor? It's going as unlisted on YouTube and um, we will be um, recording it. It's going to be, you know, uploaded on like public platform. Do I have your permission? Yes. Okay, are you the same person who gave me written permission um, when I, for my consent that I uploaded? Yes. You signed this, you signed that consent? Yes. Perfect. Okay, and then, sorry, I don't think I'm in the camera anymore. Um, uh, <laughs> All right, um, 
this completes my checklist. I'm going to put my checklist down. Um, uh, let me go and start off by asking your first and last name. Karen Gill. Okay, and then um, can you tell me your date of birth? 03-17-2004. Perfect. And how old are you? 18. What's the date today? It is the 16th of December, 2022. Perfect. Um, 16th of December, 2022. Um, do you know who the president is? It is Joe Biden. Okay. Um, can you tell me the difference between apple and orange? An apple is... Or sorry, tell me the similarity. <laughs> the similarity is they are both fruits. Okay. So they're both fruits. Um, uh, can you tell me, um, you already told me what day today is. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 da. Where were you born? I was born in Big East California. Okay, what brought you in today? I just wanted a regular assessment. Okay, um, regular assessment, um, like your annual exam? Yes. Do you have any uh, focus problems that you're here with today? No. Okay, so in this case, I would go ahead and ask my patient um, in an old cart Parts fashion, the onset, the location, um, the content, the modifying factors, the quality, um, basically all of that information if she was here for a focus exam. I'm going to angle my camera so that way I know that the recording is still happening. Um, I've recorded it so many times and each time I'm, it keeps on messing up. Any, uh, it keeps on getting, can you go and scoot over maybe a little bit this way? Perfect. Okay. All right. I think that's good. I'm going to just zoom us out too. So I stay in the camera. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, um, I asked you, uh, what you're here for today. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me when was the last time you had your, um, previous eye exam? Two weeks ago. Can you tell me when was the last time you had your previous, um, a dental exam? Six months ago. And can you tell me uh, when you previously had your annual exam? Uh, sorry, your annual physical exam. Around six months ago. Okay, six yeah. months ago for a dental, six months ago for your um, annual physical mm -hmm. exam, and then two, you said two, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago for your eye exam? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, and then I'm guessing you see the dentist regularly yes. for your cleaning and checkups and all that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and ask you a couple of questions regarding um your current history mm -hmm. and you're just going to tell me where you were born mm -hmm. where were you born Big Sur, california okay um have you ever been diagnosed with um any kind of psychiatric issues no no um any depression any anxiety no okay perfect i'm just going to take a moment here um i forgot to write some notes down on my paper And are you okay if I call you Karen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, Karen, uh, what gender do you specify yourself as? Female. Okay. And um, is that what you were born as yes. as well? Okay, yes. perfect. Um, besides that, um, you said you've never really had any uh, major, have you ever had any major, have you ever been diagnosed with any major chronic illnesses? No. Okay. Um, any uh, diseases in the past or, you know, um, like HIV, tuberculosis, anything like that? No. Okay. Um, any hepatitis no. diseases? Okay. Um, have you ever been hospitalized for anything? No. And you said you don't have any psychiatric issues. No um, anxiety, no depression. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sleep sleeping problems? No. Okay. 
Um, what's your occupation? I'm a student. Okay, and what are you going to school for? Still in high school. Okay. Um, um, and you're marital status? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, what do you call it? Are you sexually active? No. Okay. Um, do you get your pap smears often? Do you get any pap smears? Uh -huh. Pap smear is like a, a, I'm guessing since you're not sexually active that you don't get any pap smears, but um, in a sense, whenever you do become sexually active, um, you normally would get a pap smear to make sure that your, um, everything down below is okay. solid, okay. okay? So with that being said, um, when was the last time you had your menstrual cycle? Last month. Okay, and can you describe the your cycle for me? Normal, a week long. Okay, a week long. Mm -hmm. um, is it heavy? Is it light? It's like medium. You know, Do you? Like okay. Do you experience any abdominal um, cramping? No. Any weakness? No. Um, do you feel like you break out? No. Any back pain? No. None. No pain no. whatsoever. Okay, great. So um, besides that, um, any other like major problems or even minor problems that you feel like um, you experience? No. No, okay. Any allergies? No. Do you take any medications? No. In the sense, in case, in, in the sense that my patient was taking any medications, I would ask her the name of the medication, I would ask her what she takes for the medication, or you know, why she takes the medication, I would ask the dosage, I would ask the, the route of medic, the route that she intakes, and then also um, the reasoning, and uh, I think that's about it. Time as well, how often she takes it. Um, so besides, so you said you don't take any medications. Have you had any surgeries in the past? No. Have you, you said you've never been hospitalized. Sorry, I keep on asking the same thing. I'm just, again, really nervous and I'm just trying not to repeat myself, but I, I feel like I don't want to miss anything, okay? Yep. So um, besides that, can you tell me a little bit about your immunizations? Are all your immunization records on point, yes. uh, up to date? Yes. Have you recently had, with COVID, of course, mm -hmm. have you recently um, had the COVID vaccine? Yes. Okay, have you, and uh, how many doses? Three. Three doses total? Okay, mm -hmm. including the booster. Yeah. Perfect. Um, what about the flu shot since the flu season? Yes. You've had that mm -hmm. as well. Perfect. You are all up to date. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and ask you, uh, you said you're not sexually active. Um, do you have um, like a, a history of any kind of other like problems that you've had down below? No. Like any GYN issues that no. you've been dealing with? Any discharge? No. Any um, urination when you're no. peeing? No? Okay. Wow, you're really on it, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go ahead and move down and basically the next few questions I'm going to ask are going to be about your grandparents, your parents, your siblings, and um, you don't have any children, correct? Okay, so basically about those, you know, three individuals or criteria in your family, including yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start from your head, move down to your toes. Mm -hmm. um, do you experience, actually, do you or anyone in your family ever has experienced a vision loss or a hearing loss? No. Um, any discharge coming from your ears or, you know, your grandparents or anything like that? No. Okay, anyone in your family ever had any problems, uh, psychiatric, psychiatric problems? No. Anyone in your family ever been diagnosed with or hospitalized for anything? No. Okay, um, are your grandparents living no. or uh, deceased? Dead. Okay, um, all of them, some of them? Um, <laughs> Why are you laughing? Sorry. <laughs> okay, um, and then what did they uh, pass away from? Old age. Okay. Um, what about your parents? Alive. Your parents are alive? Okay, and speak a little bit louder, please. Um, alive. Okay, no, you're going to talk to me, alive. but um, your parents are alive. Um, can you tell me if, um, uh, are your parents, you, do your parents or your grandparents, have they ever had any hypertension problems? No. High, uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes? No. No? They've never been diagnosed with any of those? What about any uh, anyone in your family ever had a stroke or a heart attack? No. Okay. Um, anyone in your family have, has had any seizures or headaches? No. Okay. Um, anyone in your family ever been diagnosed with COPD, asthma, emphysema? No. Okay. Anyone in your family, including yourself, ever been uh, diagnosed with um, any kind of stomach problems, diverticulitis? Any Crohn's disease? No. 
anyone in your family ever been uh, diagnosed with any kind of incontinence issues, like having problems urinating, having problems having a bowel movement, constipation? No. Okay. Um, what about um, any problems in your family with any um, diabetes? No. Anyone in your family ever been diagnosed with any kind of um, uh, muscle or joint aches? No. Anyone in your family ever been diagnosed, uh, or sorry, I shouldn't say diagnosed, but has anyone in your family or yourself been using any drugs or any substance abuse? No. Any alcohol? No. Uh, okay. Um, violence, violence and safety wise, um, do you feel like you are safe in your home? Yes. Okay. Um, do you wear a seatbelt when you're driving? Yes. Do you text and drive? No. Okay. Great job. Um, anyone in your family ever been diagnosed with obesity? No. Okay. Um, anyone in your family or yourself ever been um, diagnosed with arthritis? No. Okay. Um, I'm kind of jumping all over, just kind of whatever's coming to my mind is what I'm asking. So sorry for repeating myself again. Um, what are your living arrangements like? I live with my parents. Okay. Um, and then you said you live with your parents. Um, do you feel, again, safe at home? Yes. Do you feel like you have a roof over your head? Yes. Do you feel like you have any financial burdens? No. Do you feel like you have, um, uh, do you get food? Um, are you provided with meals? Yes. Okay. Um, do you work? No. Okay, so you said you're just a student, right? Mm -hmm. Or a student? Yeah. Um, anyone in your family ever been diagnosed with any kind of genetic problems like cystic fibrosis or um, Huntington's disease? No. Or anything like that? No. no. Okay, so overall it seems like you know you have a pretty healthy family. Again, um, I just wanted to inform you that in case we find anything abnormal or you, you know anything abnormal in your exam today, you are required to see a, or you should see a professionally licensed individual instead of myself. I'm not licensed. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and move forward. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands now. As I'm washing my hands, I'm going to go ahead, um, I'm pretending like I'm washing my hands. I'm going to ask my um, patient, um, do you exercise? Yes. How often do you exercise? Three times a week. Okay, what do you do for your form of exercise? Cardio. Okay, um, uh, that's really good. It's really good to exercise three to five times a week, whether it's mm -hmm. light or heavy. Um, besides that, what's your diet like? Pretty healthy. Okay, can you describe how many meals you eat a day and then fruits or vegetables? It's three meals a day, vegetables okay. and fruits every day. Okay, do you feel like you sleep well? Yes. Um, do you have any, again, any stresses in your life? No. With school, with job, with finances? No. Okay. Um, do you intake enough water? Yes. How many glasses a day? Nine glasses. Okay. What do you enjoy during your leisure time? For fun, what do you like to do? Go to the gym. Okay. Um, besides that, any other hobbies? No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start off. I'm going to go ahead and assess you now use from your head to your toes. I'm going to start off from the top. If at any time you have any questions or if you feel um, uncomfortable at all or, you know, pain, anything like that, just go ahead and stop me. I'll go ahead and stop the exam. I'm going to go ahead and um, actually, uh, before I go ahead and assess you physically, I'm going to go ahead and ask you a couple more questions, okay. which I forgot already. Okay. Um, have you experienced any changes uh, in your skin? No. Any changes with you recently, with any headaches, any vision loss, any any change of vision, any change of hearing? No. Um, do you feel like uh, you were, any headaches, or sorry, I've already asked, any fevers or any chills? Do you feel tired or fatigued at a certain point? No. Okay. Um, geez. Uh, any weight loss? No. Any weight gain? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, besides that, do you have any difficulty smelling or swallowing? No. Okay. Do you have any difficulty or have you experienced any runny nose or any discharge coming from your ears or your nose? No. Okay. What about, um, you said you have no problem swallowing. Um, anything, anything bothering you about your throat? No. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move down to your chest now or your respirations. Mm -hmm. Do you have any breathing problems or do you have difficulty breathing? No. Do you experience shortness of breath? No. Okay. 
um, with your heart? Do you feel like your heart is racing at times? Do you feel like um, you experience anything abnormal with your heart where it's, um, again, fast beating or if you hear any murmurs or anything abnormal with your heart? No. Okay. Um, do you have any muscle aches? No. Any, any uh, joint pain? No. Any shoulder or no. knee pain? No. Okay. Um, no chest pain, you said, right? No. Um, any cough that you've had recently? No. Any changes in your skin? Um, it could be any rashes, it could be any breakouts, it could be any lesions or anything, um, like anything that looks, uh, like pigmentation or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, okay. Besides your skin, um, have you had any um, problems having a bowel movement? No. Can you ex can you explain your sorry and can you tell me a little bit more about your bowel movement? Is it normal? Is it how many times do you go in a day? Normal, twice a day. Okay. Um, do you feel like you have diarrhea? No. Can you? Is it hard? Is it soft? It is soft, but not too hard. Regular. Okay. Um, do you feel any, um, you said you go twice a day? Yeah. And then do you feel like you're straining when you're going? Not at all. Okay. Um, what about when you're urinating? Any discharge? No. Um, any burning sensation? No. Any, um, any frequency urinating? Or you feel like you have to go pee, but it's not coming? No. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and move up to your breasts now. Um, have you? Do you do breast exams on yourself? Yes. Okay. Um, do you? Have you ever felt like you have a bump or anything abnormal? No. Do you feel like your breasts are a different size? No. Uh, okay. Um, have you noticed anything abnormal about your breasts? No. Okay. Um, no discharge coming from your breasts. No. Any any. Uh, Pain or tenderness that you felt around no. your breast? What about your stomach? No. no pain or tenderness? Okay. Um, besides that, um, any. Try to think. Have you ex been experiencing any depression or anxiety? No. Okay. Um, again, you said no sleeping problems. Do you feel like you get hot and cold easily? No. Okay. Um, you said no weight gain or weight loss. Um, what about bruising? Do you feel like you bruise easily? No. Okay. Um, do you feel like um, you have any kind of um, uh, food or environmental allerg allergies no. or anything? Okay. Anything ever bothering you if you go outside versus staying at home? No. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and move. I think this kind of completes our uh, questionnaire. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move down to the review of systems. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to assess you from your head to your toe. And I'm gonna wash my hands once again. I know I already washed it, but again, I just wanna be sure that I'm not missing anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off. I'm looking at your head. I'm just checking. I don't see any hair loss. Mm -hmm. I don't see any um, anything abnormal about your head. I don't see that you have any, um, go ahead, you can look straight. Um, I don't feel like you have any um, rashes, no pigmentations, no discoloration. I don't feel like you have any um, like redness anywhere that's abnormal. Um, I'm just, as you're sitting down, I'm just assessing your posture. Your posture is, um, well, kind of um, hunchback. You're a little too relaxed, which is okay. Um, it's, um, your posture is straight. Um, her odor, she doesn't have any odor coming from her. Her hygiene seems proper that she, you know, showers, doesn't really need um, extra, um, education on that um as far as um her mood she seems like a pretty um bright and cheery person right now orientation she is oriented to the date today and she's oriented a and alert and oriented times four i would say her reasoning is also intact i asked her in the beginning of the um was that in this video sorry yeah, it was, it was okay video. So I asked her about orange and apple, the similarities, and she said that they're both fruits. Yeah. So her reasoning is intact. She, cognitively, she is um, able to think for herself, and um, that kind of completes that. Her attitude seems to be um, also on the bright side. I don't see any signs of depression. I don't see any anxiety. I don't see any signs of any kind of... Um, 
mood swings or anything like that. Not, not, um, not visible. So besides that, I'm just going to go ahead and let, um, our, uh, professor know. Um, can you tell me your height and weight? Five, five, 109 pounds. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Indicating that, I would say that her um, BMI is uh, 21.5, and before our video, I went and checked her um, uh, blood pressure. Her blood pressure, um, I have it written down here, her blood pressure was 120 over 70. I checked it sitting down and standing up, and then also I checked her heart rate, which was 17. I checked her um, temperature, which was 97.5. I checked her O2, um, which was 99, and then also I checked her, asked her for her pain. Are you in any kind of pain? No. Zero pain out of 10. So that's also considered another vital, um, very exclusive vital. Once again, assessing her skin, no redness, no scarring. I don't see um, any signs of cyanosis. Her lips are pink. Um, you know, uh, sclera is white. I don't see any signs of jaundice. Uh, can I take a look at your fingers? I don't see any signs of clubbing. Once again, no clubbing. Capillary refills are uh, less than three seconds. I'm going to go ahead and assess the inside of your hands. Um, so that's about as much as I can see of her skin. Can you take off your jacket or is it? It's a long sleeve underneath. Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, then, then it's fine. Okay, so um, according to the my patient, um, I would normally take a, ha, have her remove her um, jacket or her clothes, but for her privacy, we're going to go ahead and leave all those things on. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, again, uh, her, I checked her pigmentation to her, uh, her skin. I don't see any pigmentation. I'm just taking her skin charger. It's less than, gosh, like less than even a second. So uh, she's, not de she's very well hydrated and she's not dehydrated at all. Uh, next, I'm just going to go ahead and assess for her joint swellings. I don't feel like she has any joint swellings. Uh, symmetrically, her body is uh, seems symmetrical um, on both sides. Her knees are not showing any signs of uh, joint swelling. There's no uh, mobility issue. I'll go ahead and have her walk at the end of the video. I don't see any signs of jo uh, mobility issues, no edema, no arrhythmia. Next, we're going to go ahead and just move down again. I'm going to go ahead and just start assessing you. Um, I didn't see any signs of anything abnormal with her um, her head. I'm going to go ahead and just start by assessing her ears. Um, her ears seem um, symmetrically equal to me for both sides. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, see if I see any discharge. I don't see any discharge in either of her ears. Nothing protruding. I will go ahead and assess her ears, but first we're going to go ahead and check all of her um, cranial nerves. I'm going to go ahead and check by checking your, uh, asking you to, I'm going to assess her olfactory nerve. I need to calm down. I'm kind of going to go ahead and check her olfactory nerve, which is her nerve number, uh, cranial nerve number one. Go ahead and close your eyes. You're going to close one nostril. Go ahead and smell this and tell me what you smell orange okay and then go ahead and close the other nostril opposite nostril and tell me what you smell here roses okay perfect go ahead and you can open your eyes um her um olfactory nerve cranial nerve one is intact um i checked for patency her nose is patent i'm just going to go ahead and shine a light in her nose to see if i see anything um any, th any obstructions? I don't see any obstructions. I don't see any um, lesions. I don't see any like scarring or any kind of um, damage to her uh, nostrils. I do see pink um, uh, nasal mucosa and it's moist. That's what my assessment is. Her septum is um, not deviated. It's in, the, it's in the midline and there's no sign of turbinate either. Next, we're going to go ahead and move down to your cranial nerve too, which is your optic nerve. And with the optic nerve, I'm going to go ahead and check by using this Snellen chart right here. I'm going to just pretend like I'm standing six feet away just so I can stay in focus. But for this, uh, normally in the clinic, I would go ahead and have the patient stand 20 feet away while I'm checking um, 
their cranial nerve too, too which is a optic nerve. So go ahead and read the very bottom line, uh, the very smallest line you can read by closing one side, one eye. L T F P H. Okay, now go ahead and close, uh, cover your opposite eye. L T F P H. Okay, now go ahead and uncover both eyes and then go ahead and read me the lowest line you can. L T F P H. Perfect. So she read me the 2020 line, which uh, goes to tell me that she has a 22, 2020 vision. Her OS and her OD are both um, 2020. Her cranial nerve too, which is the optic nerve, it is um, intact. Uh, I'm gonna go and check for Perla now. Um, by her having her follow, um, actually, Perla is checking for the light. So go and look straight for me. All right, I see her pupils are dilating. Her pupils are dilating bilaterally. I see uh, uh, like indirect. Um, indirect uh, constriction of her pupils as well, or di dilation of her pupils as well. I'm just gonna inspect her sclera now. Her sclera is nice and white. There's no signs of jaundice. Um, I see um, an iris. I see, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at, with my um, ophthalmoscope, her her eye. Um, for the uh, patient's safety and for myself, I'm going, going to stick my um, pinky out and I'm just gonna assess and look from my right eye to her right eye and then do my left eye to her left eye. Once again, I just wanted to um, notify that I would assess both sides, but for the sake of the video and to save some time, I'm just going to assess one side and um, try to just normalize my findings for the opposite side, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the light. Go, go ahead and look straight for me. I am assessing her eye. I'm putting my hand on her forehead and I am just uh, looking, I see a white sclera once again i see an iris i see the red reflex i can see her lens her optic disc i see i don't see any um edema with her blood vessels her blood vessels are nice and um um not i guess you can say like crazy looking so um that's good that indicates that your cranial nerve to optic nerve is in healthy standing it's intact Next, I'm gonna go ahead and move down to your cranial nerve three, four, and six. Cranial nerve three, four, and six are, are your oculo, oculo, oculomotor um, nerve, your abducens, and your trochlear, okay? Mm -hmm. So with that nerve, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and check for accommodation, and you're gonna go ahead and follow this pen light. Um, follow, just follow it along with me with your eyes, okay? I'm checking for accommodation, I'm checking for tracking, and I'm checking for nystagmus. Um, I don't see any of which um, indicating that this patient's um, cranial nerve three, four, and six, uh, ocular motor, um, trochlear, and her um, abducen nerves, our cranial nerves are all intact. Next, we're gonna go and move down to cranial nerve five, which is your trigeminal. Um, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna ask you to uh, open your mouth, uh, say ah. Uh, Perfect, so having her say ah, and I'm just checking her trigeminal cranial nerve five, it is intact. I'm gonna go ahead, while I'm here, I'm gonna check the strength of her tongue. Can you go ahead and look, uh, lift your tongue up for me? Can you lift your tongue, uh, can you poke your cheek with it? Okay, her, uh, her tongue is bilaterally strong, this side too. It's strong, it's midline, her uvula is midline. I just assessed her inside of her mouth. It's nice and pink, there's no missing teeth. Um, I didn't see any lesions, I didn't see any uh, bacteria build up. Um, so all of that seemed healthy and normal to me. Um, your, again, what we checked was your cranial nerve uh, seven, it was intact, or sorry, cranial nerve, um, not seven, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, cranial nerve five, I'm like jumping around. Cranial nerve five, trigeminal is intact. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and move down to cranial nerve seven. We've already done six, so we're gonna move down to seven. I'm gonna have you wrinkle your forehead. I'm gonna have you smile for me. I'm going to have you frown for me. Okay, so her cranial nerve seven is intact. We're gonna go ahead and move down to cranial nerve um, eight, which is your cochlear um, nerve, uh, cochlear cranial nerve. And I'm gonna go and do the whisper test for you first. Green bowl. 
popular. Okay, so her cranial nerve eight, which is a cochlear, is intact. We're gonna go and do the um, Weber steps now. Tell me when you don't hear it. Stop. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do the Ryan test. Tell me when you don't hear it. Stop. Tell me when you don't hear it. Stop. Okay, so this go ahead, uh, I checked her cranial nerve um, eight, which is her cochlear nerve. Her hearing is intact. I'm gonna go ahead and just assess the inside of her ear real quick. As I'm uh, assessing the inside of her ear, I'm going to just uh, have her. Can you move your hair back, please? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Do I have a pretty pen? Yeah. Oh. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'm for the patient safety, I'm going to go ahead and just assess um, one side of her. I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to stick my pinky up as I'm assessing her ear. And I'm going to actually turn this around so I can have a better grip at it. And I'm just looking, pulling her. Um, ear up and back and I am looking oh I see actually a really good um, pearl of gray I can see her pearl of gray I can see her um, a little bit of wax I don't see anything uh, obstructing her ear canal I see her internal ear canal as well as her external ear canal just like this without the scope and then I see her um, since this is her left ear her left ear is indicating uh, is this your left ear no. no, this is her ear. I'm sorry, this is her right ear. Her right ear, which indicates that her cone of light is at 5 o'clock. I see the cone of light. I see um, there's no, um, again, no abscess, no discharge. Um, I don't see anything uh, protruding from her ear, so her ear canal is good. For her left ear, her cone of light would be at 7 o'clock. We're not going to assess the left one just for the sake of time. But um, that was your cranial nerve 8. So that cranial nerve 8 is intact. I'm going to go ahead and set this down. Next, we're going to go ahead and do your cranial nerve 9, 10, and 12. Your glossopharyngeal cranial nerve. Cranial nerve um, 10, which is your vagus nerve. And then cranial nerve 12, which is your hypoglossal nerve. Okay? So I'm going to have you do the swallow test. Swallow for me. I see um, swallowing her, her trachea deviating down below. Next, go ahead and just, I'm going to go ahead and just, I already checked actually the strength of her tongue. I'm going to go ahead and have you, this is where I would normally take something and I would have her gag, but we're not going to do that for the sake of the, you know, um, the video. I don't want her to gag, but I did check that. I'm going to go ahead. Can you just uh, face that way for me? I'm going to assess or palpate her trachea and then go ahead and uh, swallow for me a couple of times. I feel her trachea moving up and down. I'm just assessing all of her. Very nice. Um, again, I don't feel any masses. I don't feel anything abnormal. Her thyroid feels uh, nice and healthy. It's midline. There's no deviation. Go ahead and sit up straight for me. Perfect. So that was actually your, um, and we've already done the ah. So that completes your cranial nerve 9, 10, and 12. Lastly, we're going to go and do cranial nerve 11. I'm going to have you just uh, shrug your shoulders up for me. All right, and then try to avoid my resistance. Uh, try to, you know, push against my resistance. Okay, perfect. So bilaterally, her cranial nerve 11 um, is also intact. I checked, asked her to shrug both of her shoulders, and um, she did well. Perfect. So next, we're going to go ahead and move down. I'm just, um, I've already assessed her mouth. I'm going to go ahead and see if, uh, let me take a look at my notes to see if there's anything missing. Okay, um, I've already assessed her mouth. Uh, there was, uh, her gums looked healthy, her teeth, there was no missing teeth. Mucosa was nice and pink and moist. Um, just what we like to see, there was no sign of bacteria. Our, um, you know, her uvula was midline, her tongue was midline as well. I'm going to go ahead and assess my palp, and now I'm going to palpate all of your lymph nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and first start off by assessing your um, pre-ocular, uh, auricular lymph node, which is right here behind your, or in front of your ear. Now I'm going to go ahead and move back to your ear. I'm going to go ahead and move down to your, um, um, Occipital, occipital lymph node. 
I don't see any pain. Uh, there's no pain. She's not reporting any pain or tenderness. That I don't feel any masses. I'm going to go ahead and move down to the ton tonsillar lymph node, which is the lymph node right here. I'm going to go, and I don't feel, again, any, um, anything protruding. I don't feel any masses, no tenderness. I'm going to go and move down to her submendal mandibular, which is right here by her jaw. I don't feel anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move down to her submental. I don't feel anything abnormal. Uh, no masses, no tenderness. She's not reporting any pain. I'm going to go ahead and move down to her anterior and posterior clavicular. Anterior clavicular is right here. Posterior clavicular right here. No pain, no tenderness, um, no masses. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move down to her uh, supraclavicular, which are right here. And I'm just uh, I'm going to ask her, do you feel any pain? No. pain? Okay. Um, any tenderness? No. Okay. I don't feel any masses either. So um, that was all of her lymph nodes. While I'm here, I'm going to go and just uh, assess for her or palpate her uh, maxillary sinuses as well. Let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness. No pain, no tenderness. Okay, I'm going to go and do her frontal sinus. Any pain or tenderness? No pain, no tenderness. All right. Um, so, perfect. Thank you so much. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just move down. And I've already assessed your, your neck which was your, um, just about everything. I will have her, I will assess her JVD um, when we're laying down, when I have her lay down. So I'm gonna go ahead and move down and we're gonna go ahead and just start off by doing your shoulders now, or I'm gonna go ahead and just check your respiratory rate, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm checking, ch seeing her chest wall, her chest wall seems symmetrically, bilaterally equal. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of, um, Inspect it. I don't see any, you know, lesions, anything protruding. I don't see anything protruding. I'm going to go ahead and move down and I'm going to just uh, give her an AP ratio of one to two. And I'm going to, um, and I've already inspected her chest wall. I'm going to go ahead and just percuss in between the intercostals. I hear resonance everywhere. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move up and check to see if I have, uh, I'm gonna percuss, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and palpate. Just palpating all of her. I'm doing light palpation in between her intercostals. And next I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, assess. Uh, I'm going to inspect, let me, oh, I have my, let me just check to see what my timing is. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and move down and I'm going to uh, listen to all of her breath sounds. Every time my stethoscope touches you, just take okay. a nice deep breaths. Okay, I just wanted to um, notify this for the sake of the video. Normally, I would examine this. Um, I would normally examine her or auscultate her breath sounds underneath her clothes, but for the sake of her privacy, we're leaving her clothes on, and I'm just uh, doing it on um, over her clothes. So I heard uh, bilaterally clear breath sounds in all of her on both sides of her um, lungs. Um, I didn't hear any wheezing. Um, I didn't hear any. Um, consolidation, any buildup of the fluids. I didn't hear anything abnormal with her breath sounds. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just um, have you turn around. Oh, actually, sorry, before I do that, let me just go ahead and I was supposed to do something all here. I've already listened to the... Oh, I'm going to go ahead and um, check her diaphoretic um, excursion. Actually, do her uh, respiratory excursion first. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And let go. Perfect, so my hands went out and in, indicating that she has full uh, respiratory expansion of her uh, lungs. I'm gonna go ahead and check for her diaphoretic excursion, okay? And what I'm looking for here is basically where I hear the resonance versus where I hear the dullness and as soon as I hear the dullness is where kind of her um, her um, diaphragm ends 
So I'm going to go ahead and take my little scope here, and I'm going to, uh, sorry, my measuring tape, and I'm just going to measure that spot. And a uh, normal finding for that is a three to seven centimeters, and hers is at about four, which is considered normal. Uh, now I'm going to go and have you move to the, the turn around. Let me have you move your hair back. Again, I'm assessing her, you know, uh, the back of her, her back, basically. I, I don't see any, um, bilaterally, her back seems equal. I see her respiration rates. I, I'm giving her a 17 since she's resting right now. She's not having any labored breathing. Um, she's not having any difficulties. Um, I'm going to go and listen to her breath sounds. post early now. Once again, um, there's no uh, nothing abnormal about her breath, breath sounds. Whatever I'm listening to um, my with my diaphragm, I would also listen with my bell. But for the sake of the time, I'm just listening it to listening um, to it with one with just my diaphragm. Um, I heard clear breath sounds. There's no consolidation on her uh, rear um, posterior side of the lungs either. Um, there was no wheezing found, no bronchi, um, nothing abnormal about her breath sounds. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, palpate and then I will percuss. Um, let me know, uh, let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness. No pain, no tenderness. Okay, and then I don't feel any masses either. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and just percuss. I'm just going in between her intercostals from the back. I'm going to check for di uh, I hear resonance everywhere. I'm going to go and just check for a diaphora diaphragmatic excursion. Um, and then I'll we'll check that space. Once again, it's four centimeters for the sake of time. I'm just doing it really quickly because I've been going over. Um, all right. And then she took nice deep breaths. I saw her, I, you know, visual visualized my hands going out and in indicating that she has um, a pretty good, um, a pretty wide uh, chest expansion. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do her CVA tenderness here while she's here. Perfect. Um, I didn't see her jump up at all. That indicates a negative CVA tenderness. Go ahead and turn around for me now. I'm going to do a cardiovascular assessment now. We're going to go and move down to your heart. Um, I'm going to ask you if uh, you feel any pain or tenderness. No. I, I of course, have to do it. Um, just palpating where I'm going to be assessing for her um, sounds, for the heart sounds. I don't feel any masses. I don't she didn't report any pain or tenderness. I'm going to go and just percuss that, those areas as well. Nothing abnormal. I'm going to go ahead and listen to her um, um, aortic, pulse, uh, aortic pulse first. You can breathe normal. Oh. No brewy. <clears throat> no brew. Um, I don't hear any. Oh, I'm, oh, sorry. I'm listening to her aortic pulse at the second intercostal um, on her left hand, right hand side. Now moving to her second intercostal on the left hand side, which is the pulmonic pulse. Next, I'm moving down to her um, herbs point, which is at the third intercostal on the left side. Next, I'm moving down to the tricuspid, which is the fourth intercostal on her left side. Lastly, I'm listening to the epical pulse, which is also the mitral uh, valve or multi mitral pulse, and that is at the fifth intercostal at midclavicular line. At all four, uh, all five of those points, I heard no brewy, I heard no murmurs, I heard um, S1 and S2 sounds. Um, heart sounds were normal. 
um, to listen to. Um, I didn't hear anything abnormal. Same thing that I would listen to on the diaphragm, or you know, same points that I would listen to on with the diaphragm. I would also listen with the bell, but for the sake of time, I'm just doing it on one side. Once again, if she was in my clinic, I would go ahead and assess her um, cardiovascular sounds, her respiratory sounds, all underneath her clothes, or have her remove her her top off. But for her, the sake of her privacy, we're not doing that. So um, we've done your cardiovascular assessment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move down to your abdomen. And for your abdomen, I'm gonna go ahead and let me just put all this away. All right. Can you put your head down right there? I think I have you like going opposite now. You're gonna go and lay down for me. Perfect. I will have my little bit of notes if I need to even look at them. All right, you can go, oh, sorry. Okay, all right. Um, go ahead and expose your stomach for me. All right, I'm inspecting your stomach. I'm looking, I don't see any scars. I'm looking for any discoloration. I don't see any discoloration. I don't see anything protruding. I don't see anything abnormal. Um, her umbilicus is midline. I don't see anything abnormal about that either. Once again, no scars, no lesions, uh, no, con you know, her contour seems even. Symmetrical, her, her abdomen also looks and feels even, or looks even. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by auscultating, you always want to auscultate the abdomen first before you do anything because um, if you palpate or percuss prior to auscultating, it throws off the um, bowel sounds and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and listen to um, start off at the right lower quadrant. Sorry, it's a little cold. Okay. time I am speeding up the the bowel you know the auscultating the bowel sounds only because I'm, I'm trying to uh, save some time but her bowel sounds I would listen in each quadrant for 15 to 30 seconds um, I heard normal bowel sounds nothing hyperactive nothing abnormal um, I would do the same thing uh, that I'm doing with the diaphragm with the bell as well but again for the sake of time I'm going I'm go just going to verbalize that uh, next I'm gonna go ahead and move down and listen to her aortic pulse. Periodic pulse, which is located right above the umbilicus. Um, I heard no brewy, no thrills, nothing abnormal. I'm going to go and move down to her uh, renal arteries now. nothing abnormal about her renal arteries either uh, bilaterally it, you know they're equal uh, no brewy no thrill I'm gonna go and move down to her um, iliac arteries now next I'm gonna do the femoral arteries Once again, um, whatever I'm doing with the diaphragm, I would do the same thing with the bell. I heard in all the um, areas, I heard no brewy, no thrill. I heard normal uh, pulses at all of her um, in all of her arteries and, and areas. Um, since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, I've already listened to all of her, uh, auscultated all of her sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by percussing now. I'm gonna put this down. I'm just I uh, have. Percussing and I'm percussing from right quadrant and moving all the way around. Um, I hear, you know, I hear a resonance. I don't hear any dullness in all four of her quadrants. I'm going to just um, lightly palpate her abdomen now. Let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness. Okay. okay? Any pain or tenderness? No. Any pain or tenderness? No pain, no tenderness. Any pain or tenderness? No pain. Is it ticklish? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so no pain or tenderness. I'm gonna go ahead and move down and palpate um, for her inguinal lymph nodes and her femoral lymph nodes. Any pain or tenderness? No pain, no tenderness. Any pain or tenderness no pain, down here? No tenderness. Perfect, okay, so I went and go ahead and checked um, no pain or tenderness in her femoral or inguinal um, 
lymph nodes either. I'm gonna go ahead and palpate her um, liver, which is located in her right upper quad right now. Take a deep breath for me. Hold it. All right, I feel the edge of her liver. Go ahead and um, let go of your breath. Perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead now. Um, I kind of feel the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and just percuss that area one more time. And I'm gonna check her liver span. Her liver span is um, seven centimeters, which is actually considered normal. Six to 12 centimeters for liver span is considered normal. So that is indicative of a normal liver span finding. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and move down to her spleen, see if I can feel her spleen. I hear a little bit of dullness this is where the spleen is. I'm gonna go ahead and have her take a deep breath in, hold it, perfect, uh, let it go. I don't feel for her spleen, which is actually considered a normal finding. You're not supposed to feel for the spleen. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, try to find her kidneys, which are gonna be located right here in the back. I, don't, I can't feel for her kidneys. Um, Again, that's a normal finding, so I'm um, palpating, trying to palpate her kidneys. I don't, I don't feel them. I've palpated her spleen and her liver as well, so all that is good. I'm gonna go ahead and now, let me take a look at my notes. Palpate for cuss. All right, so that actually indicates our, or completes our abdomen um, assessment. Let me have you, oh, let me go ahead and palpate her bladder since I'm here, or percuss her bladder. It's, I hear timpani, so that means that it is empty. I'm gonna go ahead and have you um, sit down now. Perfect, okay, so you're sitting down now. I am just uh, going to, actually, I, since you're here, I'll do the spine at the very end. I'm just going to assess her upper, extre upper extremities now. Um, once again, just bilaterally checking her shoulders, I don't see anything um, unequal or uh, asymmetrical about her shoulders. I'm going to go ahead and move down and assess her arms. All right, um, bilaterally her arms, I don't see any signs of um, um, any scars, no lesions. Um, her, her forearms as well. No signs of scars or lesions. I don't see anything palpating, no pain or tenderness. Um, hands, same thing, wrist as well. I don't see any anything protruding, anything abnormal. No scars, no lesions, no hi hyperpigmentation, nothing abnormal about um, her hands. I'm gonna go ahead and have her, I've already inspected your you know, upper extremities now. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, do uh, palpate your shoulders. Uh, let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness. Okay, I'm going through the bi uh, brachial groove now, checking the supraclavicular area. Any pain or tenderness? No pain, no tenderness. Okay, I don't feel any bruises, uh, any, um, I'm so tired now. Um, I don't feel any for any masses either. I'm gonna go ahead and move down to her biceps, uh, or her elbows, I should say. Medial side is the goal first point. Uh, I'm assessing both sides uh, at the same time just because for the sake of time, but normally you would assess just one side at a time. Once again, um, goal first point, uh, goal first elbow, which is on the medial side, and then um, tennis el elbows, which is on the outer side of the elbow. Um, I don't feel any for any of those points. It feels normal. I feel, I can feel her epitrochlear um, nodule or her lymph node which is normal. I'm gonna go ahead and feel for her axillary lymph nodes right now as well. I don't see any um, cysts, I don't see anything abnormal. I don't feel for any, I can't feel for any tenderness. Do you have any pain? No. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and move down to her wrist. Um, I'll do one side only. Um, any pain or tenderness, no. let me know. Okay, I'm just going around feeling for any pain or tenderness. I'm going in between her, uh, metacarpals uh, between her fingers now, inner metacarpals. Let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness. I don't feel for any, I can't feel for any masses, which is actually considered a normal finding. Again, no signs of stenosis. Um, go ahead and do this with your fingers. I'm going to do range of motion now. Go ahead and do, squeeze your fingers, and then um, push your, you have, bring your fingers up. Try to lift your fingers, try to, perfect. Fingers are bilaterally strong, hands are bilaterally strong and equal, and then do the same thing with your wrist. 
and then up, around, and then down, and then go ahead and lift your hands up, and then same thing for your wrist are bilaterally strong as well. We're gonna go and do the same thing with your elbows. Um, can you can you abduct? And then can you abduct? Oh sorry. Perfect. Okay. For your shoulders, can you go ahead and do this for me? Alright, can you go ahead and bring your shoulders all the way back? Perfect. Can you go ahead and do this? Can you supinate? Can you pronate? Alright. Any problems with any move? No. no. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and have you just lift your hands, arms all the way out. All right, and then go ahead and try to close them. Perfect. Bilaterally, um, upper extremities are both strong, bilaterally equal. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and move down. Let me see what's next before I forget. Shoulder sharp, dull. We'll go and do that at the end. Epitrochlear, I've already I've already checked as well. Um, reflexes. Since we're here, I'm gonna go and check for your reflexes. Your brachioradialis, which is on the inside of your wrist. I'm gonna go and check for that. All right, your brachial reflex. All right, and then your triceps reflex. Perfect, and then same thing for this side, brachial radialis. All right, your brachial, and then your... All right, I feel all of our upper extremities have um, bilateral reflexes on both sides. We're gonna go ahead and move down to your lower extremities now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and assess your hips. Go ahead and uh, I see that your hips are bilaterally equal, same. Um, I don't see anything protruding, I don't see any swelling. Uh, her knees look bilaterally equal, the same to me as well. I don't see anything, um, no signs of edema, no signs of anything abnormal. I'm going to go ahead and move down to your ankles. Her ankles are not showing any signs of edema, nothing abnormal, no scars, no lesions on any of her lower extremities, um, nothing abnormal. I'm going to go ahead and have you, um, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and check your pulses while, we're, while I'm here, and then we'll, I'll move down. Okay, so first, first, um, uh, first, uh, Pulse I'm going to check is your popliteal pulse, mm -hmm. which is located in the right behind your knees. Bilaterally, her pulses are strong. I'm giving them a grade uh, a two plus, um, and I will go ahead and check for your tibial pulse now. Dorsal tibial, no posterior tibial. Her. Uh, it's located in the back of her ankles. Um, posterior tibial pulse is bilaterally strong with a grade two plus. I'm gonna go and check her um, a dorsalis pedis pulses, which are ro located right above the, the bigger, bigger greater toe. Bilaterally equal, strong, so um, giving it a two plus. Um, next, I'm gonna go ahead and move down and check your reflexes for your knees so or for your lower extremities so for the lower extremities we have a couple of reflexes i think it's about three let me just take a look at my notes okay first we're going to do the popliteal reflexes bilaterally strong for uh, uh patellar reflexes next we're going to do the achilles reflex all right all right, um, bilaterally, she has reflexes for her Achilles, and we're gonna go and do the Babinski um, test, which is where she flares her feet. <laughs> um, again, reactive um, on both sides. Since we're here, we're gonna go ahead and just do the, um, oh, that was a planchar pedis. Since we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and start off by doing her sharp and dull uh, sensation check to see if she has sensation in all of her extremities. Starting from the bottom, we're just gonna work our way back up. Let me know if you feel sharp or dull, okay? Ready for this? Sharp, dull, sharp, dull, sharp, dull, sharp, dull, sharp, sharp, dull, sharp, sharp, dull, dull. Go and give me your hands. Sharp, sharp, 
those. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so she has sensation um, in actually all of her extremities, including her upper extremity, including her face. I was meaning to do this all together um, with her extremity, so good job on that. You have sensation in all of your upper extremity as well as lower extremities. Um, and then now I'm going to go ahead and have you perform some range of motion with your um, hips and while, before I palpate them. So go ahead, again, lay back down. Um, you can go ahead and move to one side. Okay, I'm assessing her hips right now and I'm just checking to see if there's any form of uh, you know, arrhythmia once again, any swelling, anything abnormal. Um, I feel like uh, symmetrically both, both of her hips were symmetrically even. I'm going to go ahead and palpate. Tell me if you feel any pain or tenderness. No pain, no tenderness. Okay. I don't feel it for, I can't feel for any masses or anything protruding. I'm just moving down. I'm going to go to go and do the same thing. Can you, okay, you can go ahead and move on your back. All right, I'm going to assess or palpate her knees now. Tell me if you feel any pain or tenderness. No pain, no tenderness. All right, no masses. Same thing for the back of her knee. No pain, no tenderness. No pain, no tenderness. No, um, uh, no masses. <laughs> Uh, feeling for her ankles now, or malleolus, the internal side of her ankles. Any pain or tenderness? No pain, no tenderness. Okay. Any pain or tenderness on the outer? Nope. All right. Any pain or tenderness on your toes? No. I'm palpating in between her toes. I don't feel for any, um, any masses. Nothing abnormal. Nothing, uh, you know, um, kind of sticking out, protruding once again. All right. So. Um, that's good. We're going to perform some range of motion now. Can you go ahead and take your hips and can you just give me some range of motions? Can you do, um, can you come out, abduct, yeah, and then go ahead and adduct? Perfect. Bilaterally, your hips are both um, bilaterally strong. Um, can you go ahead and lift your hips up for me? Yeah, okay, and then go ahead and come down. Quad, quads and hamstrings are also bilaterally strong. Um, can you go ahead and do this for me? All the way up and down, and then the other side. Open all the way, perfect. Go ahead and lift both your legs up in the air, straight, and then bring them back down. For your ankles, can you rotate your ankles? Um, can you lift them up and rotate them? Yep. And then can you do this with your feet? Okay, go ahead. Pull up and go ahead and push down on my hands. Bilaterally, lower extremities are both strong, bilaterally equal as well. Um, no signs of you know weakness on one side versus the other. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have you, let me check to see if I'm missing anything. Okay, so I'm just uh, gonna have you stand up for me and we're gonna do your check your spine. Oh, actually, sorry. Since you're laying down, I forgot earlier. I'm gonna check her JVD. Just lay back straight for me. And I'm gonna have you move that way. Uh, look that way. Perfect. I can see her JVD pulse. This is a pulse that you normally would not uh, palpate. So I'm just observing it. I see it, you know, kind of rising. Um, again, if I feel for anything, it won't be there. So okay, perfect. You you can go ahead and stand up now or sit down actually. I'm gonna go ahead and check for your other pulses. Since I'm already here, I'm checking her temporal pulse, which is right here. Bilaterally strong, equal, I would give it a, a plus two. I'm gonna check her carotid pulse. Carotid pulse is something that you check. I just wanna make sure we're still on the, okay. Um, can you show over this one? Yeah. Carotid pulse is something that you check just one, uh, one um, side at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and assess for her carotid pulse. No sign of fruity. It's uh, strong. I would give it a plus two. Other side, bilaterally strong. I would give it a plus two as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and move down to her uh, brachial pulses now. I'm gonna listen to them bilaterally equal using my two fingers. Bilaterally, her brachial pulses are also strong and equal. I would give it a plus two. I'm gonna go and listen to her radial pulses. 
bilaterally strong, I would give a plus two as well. Um, that completes the pulses. Okay, so now you can go ahead and stand up for me. I'm going to have you go all the way back. Can you go ahead and walk toward me? Can you go ahead and walk back on your tippy toes? Can you go ahead and walk back to me on your heels? Perfect, all right, go ahead and stand here for me. I checked her gait, her gait is steady. Um, she's not losing any coordination. Go ahead and we're gonna perform the Romberg test. Go ahead and close your eyes for me. Stick your arms out straight. All right, and I'm uh, good. You can put your hands down, keep your eyes closed. She's not losing any coordination, no about you know, any form of balance, so she's fully um, coordinated. You can open your eyes for me. As you're standing here, I'm gonna go and assess her spine as well. Once again, now I'm assessing her, um, her entire body. I don't see any um, imbalance in between the two. Both sides seem bilaterally equal. Um, her shoulders are bilaterally equal, symmetrically. Her hips are bilaterally equal. I see the skin fold underneath her buttocks area. Um, her hips, uh, I already mentioned, sorry. Her legs, lower extremity is bilaterally equal as far as upper extremity as well. Go ahead and curve your back for me. Okay, um, I don't see any signs of, um, I don't see any sign of, oops, um, scoliosis. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, palpate using the outer ulnar, outer side of my hands, her spine. There's no uh, tenderness, no pain reported. Um, range of motion, stand up straight for me. Go ahead and bend back. All right, go ahead and bend side to side. All right, range of motion. She has full range of motion in her spine. You can go ahead and stand up straight for me. Go ahead and sit down. I forgot one thing and I'm trying to think really hard what it is. Okay, I forgot to check the tact tactile for Midas for your, um, um, I just wanna make sure I have some time left. Okay. Um, Okay, check tile for Midas. I'm gonna go ahead and check uh, 99. 99, 99, 99, 99. Same thing with the back side. I would do the same thing on the back side. Once again, um, check tile for Midas is uh, bilaterally equal. Um, this actually completes our exam. Thank you so much for your time. And um, I hope to see you next time. Bye. That was so over. I already